to run a church and he's fanning into flame the gifts of God. And these verses have stuck with me this week from 2 Timothy chapter 1, 1 to 5. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Paul saw Timothy as a dear son. Verse 3, I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience. As night and day, I constantly remember you in my prayers. Who are we remembering? Who do we remember in our prayers? I rec recalling your tears. I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. Verse 5, I'm reminded. I'm reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother, good old Lois, and in your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded now lives in you, Timothy, in you also. Who has prayed for us? Who has cared for us? Who are we praying for? Don't underestimate the power of a mother's prayers. Amen? Don't underestimate the prayers of a mother. Because I'm sure many of you have prayed. Many of you have worried. Many of you have stressed. Many of you have waited for that car to come in to the driveway. Amen? Don't underestimate the power of a mother's prayer. Embrace grace and mercy and truth and hope today. It might be hard. It might be fun. Paul is reminded of the sincere faith which first lived in this young man, Timothy's grandma, Lois. And then in his mother, Eunice, these, these women of faith. What will be our legacy? What will be our story? Who is continuing on in the faith and serving Jesus, where are your children? Where are our grandchildren? They may not be our biological children, but they are still our children. But we're coming alongside them. Young or old, in church or not. But we're praying. We're offering faith, hope, and love to them. Ladies, don't underestimate your influence. Don't underestimate the power of prayer. Love and care for those around you. For those that God has blessed you with as your children. Jesus was a young boy. It's Luke chapter 2. His mum and dad lose the Son of God. Verse 41. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. Very interesting. Festival of the Passover, because he would become the Lamb of God. 
He would also take away sin and death. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were not aware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. Hey, have you seen Jesus? You know he's about this high. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers and listening to them and asking them questions. Three days, friends. Where did he sleep? Where did he eat? Who looked after him? <laughs> Verse 47, everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, what on earth are you? Oh, no. Son, why have you treated us this way? That works, the Michael translation. The what on earth are you doing? <laughs> Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Three days. Jesus has a question for them. Why are you searching for me, mum and dad, he asked. Didn't you know? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? Didn't you know this is where I should be? I wasn't really lost. I was home. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Who's ever lost a child? Who's got a story? Good. Al's got a story. He was about seven years of age and uh, we were shopping in Kmart at Kabulcha and he had a tendency to hide in the clothes racks. I don't know why, because he was quite tall anyway. And this one time he just was gone. And I wasn't a frantic mother, but I stood in Kmart and screamed at the top of my lungs. Where, where was he? But he didn't come. And so then I did start to get panicked. And I went to the security guard and I said, oh, maybe he's gone to the toilet. And I said, I went to the toilet and they wouldn't, the men wouldn't let me come in and look for my son. And he went, oh, understandably. But anyway, they found him. And when he saw me, he just started crying, Mom, I thought I had lost you forever. We lose a child. You ever been lost, Penny? Tom? No, nope, good. You should ask Nola. They lost Josiah in the Mackay based hospital. When he had his appendix out, is that right? Got the right hospital? Yep, good. <laughs> I've got a nod. So I, yes, I'm sitting in his room. <laughs> yes, don't go to hospital, they lose you. And he wasn't a very big boy, but they lost him. Yes, they took him down to the day water somewhere. So. Oh, were you, Linda? Three days. Where were you? Going to have to have the mic for this one. Is it short? <laughs> I've got morning tea to have. We lived in Pomona and it was, um, I went missing apparently. And on, they couldn't find me anywhere. And this is out in the bush. And on the third day, they found me curled up with a dingo in the wood pile. In the wood. Praise God. Ah, I could do many jokes, but I'm not. No, no. Ah, oh, thank you. Ah, yes, yes. It's scary, isn't it? They lose Jesus. They hunt. They search. It's frantic. 
Friends, may we be reminded this morning of those that have cared for us, mums and dads and aunts and uncles and friends and neighbours. They've cared, they've loved, they've prayed. They've fostered children. They've opened a preschool. Mums, know today God sees and hears your prayers. It doesn't go unnoticed. It doesn't go unheard. And the grace and mercy of God comes and surrounds us all this day. And we say thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Caroline.